it's my tree anniversary. Hey everybody, it's B. Welcome to my channel if it's your first time or welcome back if you are new. It is November of 2024, which means that I've officially been on testosterone for five whole years. And that to me is a huge accomplishment. Very excited about it. If you're queer in the United States, it's been a really difficult couple of weeks. Obviously it's important that we take action on the things that are important to us as a community and important to the United States and democracy as a whole. However, it's also important to take a moment and celebrate the 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 good things and this is one of those things uh we're going to be talking about the fact that i have been on testosterone for five years and we're going to talk a little bit about my medical transition journey now i originally came out to my very very close friends in 2014 there was like three or four people who i told and that kind of was it for a while i did come out publicly in 2017 but i didn't actually start my medical transition until November of 2019, and that is when I started testosterone. Hormones, they are an exciting thing. You never know what exactly is going to occur for you if you start hormones, be that testosterone or estrogen, but there are a few things that one can come to expect. And today I will be talking specifically about my experiences on testosterone. Uh, I can't really tell you what exactly your experience will look like on T or your experience will look like on E just talking only about my own experiences on testosterone. There are obviously a few fun memes and, and things that we all share uh, as people who have been on testosterone, and one of those is the butt hair. That one I can confirm is 100% true. Also, voice drops can be different uh, depending on the person. I'll provide a sample of what my voice sounded like before testosterone here. Hey everyone, it's me from the past. This is what my voice sounded like before I started testosterone. And now you can hear my current voice. This is me projecting and speaking loudly and speaking in almost a customer service style voice. I can drop my voice lower. I can talk down here. It sounds a little bit robotic. I can reach this range, but it's not really worth the effort for me. So I like to keep my voice kind of at this level here. I can also talk higher, but this is about as high as I can go. And it uh, also sounds fake. Um, so just kind of giving you guys an idea, five years on testosterone, this is what my voice sounds like now versus before. And that's where the range is for me. Additionally, one thing that I noticed after being on testosterone, even for just a year, was actually the weight gain. Um, that was uh, related to quite a few different things, one of which was that I was just hungry more. I had more of an appetite. I felt like I, my body was able to like actually digest food, which was awesome after living for so long, struggling to be able to eat, um, always feeling nauseous after every meal. Another thing that I noticed um, was the ability to build muscle came a lot quicker. Uh, but that could also be because I was getting more calories into my body. I'm not super sure if that had to do with the testosterone or like I said, just there was more fuel for my body to work with. How do I phrase this one? Uh, excitement? That, I definitely went through a period of about six months where that was pretty much like all <laughs> that was happening with my body was I was gaining weight and excitement. Um, and obviously that, that goes down after a while that definitely significantly decreased after my hysterectomy um, because it is important to have estrogen and testosterone together to uh, allow your body to create that sort of experience internally and for a period of time i actually had almost no estrogen which is actually pretty bad for you uh, until very very recently when i started uh, estrace which is an estrogen supplement um, that is medically prescribed by a doctor and that has definitely allowed some things to return for me, which I had kind of been missing. So that was very nice. Facial hair. I accidentally shaved my face. So sorry about that. Um, I was trying to grow my hair out for this video. And I'll be honest, guys, facial hair is so itchy and so uncomfortable um, that kind of in the middle of the night, last night, it must have been the night before, I just was like, fuck it. And I just shaved it all off. I couldn't sleep. It was scratching on my pillow. But you can see I've got a little bit, you know, or maybe you can't. I've got a little bit of stubble going on down here, you know, after two days and a little bit up here. My chin definitely grows hair quicker than my upper lip. Um, and then my sides here grow hair pretty effectively. But again, that's just one of those things that is something that's going to be different for every person. Another thing that happened for me on testosterone, I got some growth and we all kind of know what I'm talking about but not very much uh, and that's not a super big deal for me personally but I know a lot of people put a lot of stock in that 
There are things you can do if you're outside of the United States to achieve more bottom growth. Um, but at present, the United States does not allow the sale or purchase of DHT cream, which is what would cause that growth to increase. So a lot of people do things like pumping, stuff like that. Never really interests me, but there you go. More things that changed for me during my journey on tea. Um, I'm hypermobile. I became less hypermobile, which has been a bit of a blessing and a curse. A blessing in that things come out of place less frequently, especially my ribs. My god, those things are popping out all of the time and now they barely move. Uh, and that brings me to the curse side of things in that when I do have things that pop out or mm, sublux a little bit, getting them back into place is such a challenge now. One thing that has helped me a lot with that is Pilates and doing other similar exercises. But yeah, I am significantly less hypermobile now than I was before. And I'll actually share a video here really quick of what my hypermobility looked like before. And then I will show you very quickly what it looks like now. Elbows are still pretty hypermobile. But reaching back here, a lot less. All right, now let's go touch the toes. It's a lot more of a challenge now. I can actually feel it pulling back here, which is pretty cool. My hair was already thick and grew a lot, but it grows even faster now. And my hairline has receded a very, very little bit, but that is normal for all humans to experience as they get older. I will be 30 very soon, so that kind of tracks. Um, my eyesight hasn't changed. Oh, my height. My height, interestingly enough, I actually gained almost an inch in height uh, as a result of starting testosterone. Not super sure exactly how that computes based on the fact that I started it right before I turned 25, and now here I am. I think that's it, oh my god, okay. My temperature tolerance significantly decreased. I already didn't do super well in heat, but now I like die when it's hot outside. And cold is very, very cold. Also, oh my goodness. Look guys, I don't know if it's just because I caught COVID in 2020 or because I started testosterone in 2019, but every time I get sick, it is a freaking challenge. I used to be able to just get sick and just push through it. Like I could have bronchitis and like 102 degree fever and still show up to school or work. Not anymore, man. Not anymore. That stuff knocks me out quick. It's a problem. So that could be testosterone, but that could also just be that I've got like a really messed up immune system as a result of having COVID. So things that I've noticed socially that are different and kind of depend on how I present based on the day before starting testosterone could pass to an extent as a young boy. When I was very first on testosterone, I really passed as like a teenage boy. And then there was this period of time where I would get misgendered like more frequently than when I had my short hair but was still pre t It was a very strange experience. After my top surgery, that became less common. And now I'm in a state where it's kind of like a 50-50 because I don't have short hair and my glasses have thin frames and I dress a little bit more flamboyantly. I mean, look at this amazing sweater, which by the way is keeping my body warm, but my hands are so cold right now, jeez. And also I was putting more effort into speaking lower back then versus now and I still speak uh, very gay. I don't know how else to explain it. And this is just how I've always talked, so. That's not gonna change. Um, but before I was definitely trying to hide that versus now I'm just not. Socially, the experience has been very different. Going into doctor's offices, if the person perceives me as male, I'm a lot more likely to get uh, taken seriously versus before. As a matter of fact, I had been begging for a hysterectomy from the time I was like 14 years old um, and nobody would listen to me or take my pain seriously. And then as soon as I passed for masculine and I went in and requested a hysterectomy, it was like, Boom. Done. Easy. Very strange experience. Um, people took my pa take my pain a lot more seriously and are oddly more willing to, I'm going to say baby me in the doctor's office versus before. And I'm not entirely sure what that's about.
It could be the way that I'm presenting myself, maybe with more confidence. I'm not super sure exactly where that's coming from, but my brain tells me that it is sexism. And uh, if that's true, then that's really unfortunate. Uh, but now I'm in a place where I can use that privilege to help other people, so I will. Um, and have in terms of medical advocacy. Additionally, uh, men talk to me differently <laughs> and I don't know what to do with that. It's such a problem. So, okay, imagine living your life being taught to be this sort of like small, uh, goes along with kind of everything, very effeminate person who intentionally makes themselves smaller to make other people more comfortable and is not used to being taken seriously or acknowledged by anybody in any position of power and this specifically is talking uh, to like men. And it's so different. I have no idea how to engage with men. Um, and I'm working on it. Obviously there's like a language to learn, but I think a lot of it is just speaking with confidence and uh, I don't know what else. Being assertive, I guess, is the words that I'm going to use here, but it's, it's very different. It is very different. But I feel like I can also get away with a lot more. I found myself in a situation recently where a man pulled me into a conversation. Uh, he was a stranger and he was there with his partner who was significantly younger than him. And he was telling her that when a woman wears white toenail polish, that means that she is like looking to have an affair or she's looking to sleep with a man or something like that. And I just looked at him and was like, I'm too gay to know what straight people like you mean when they see weird shit like that. And obviously she busted out laughing and he was annoyed, tried to continue to make his point. I was like, yeah, dude, I don't get it. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. And down the line, right, because I, I continued chatting with them because I, I'm i bad at exiting social situations is, is the, the real, the full answer here. Um, and he turned to me and called his, his partner a bitch. Like, and, and I could not tell if he was trying to joke or be serious. She looked hurt by it, but was trying to like play it off as a joke. And so my response, to him in effect was actually I think you were the bitch in this situation and no matter what he said I just kept asserting that he was the bitch I think had I not been myself if, if I was just like kind of masking and hiding in that situation I would not have been able to say those things um, and he would not have taken me seriously but I think ultimately he wouldn't have even invited me into the conversation to begin with because he thought he was going to get some sort of backup from a from a man, right? And I use quotations here because I don't know how to explain my gender identity in any other way than to say that I'm a genderqueer man. Like, I don't really fit into that hyper-masculine mold that uh, US society seems to think men should fit into. Um, and so he was expecting that hyper-masculine response, but instead I gave him me. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, and I just, I do my very best to make sure that women feel comfortable around me. Uh, I give them extra space. I do not interrupt them when they speak or do my best not to. The ADHD sometimes takes over, but, um, and I also try to make sure that they know that I am trans. Um, and that seems to make them feel a little bit more at ease, which is good. I, I would... I obviously understand if a woman feels uncomfortable around me, um, especially if I'm presenting masculine. It is on me to make sure that I do everything in my power to make a woman feel comfortable around me. Okay, uh, in like personal things that have changed since I started testosterone. Uh, before I started T, and definitely at the beginning, being misgendered was one of the most painful experiences ever, period. <laughs> it was awful. Um, it reminded me so much of all of the things that were already a problem. Uh, in my, you know, in my body, uh, mismatching my brain, and um, it was difficult. It, it would send me spiraling. Nowadays, I can be misgendered, and it really doesn't do anything, um, which is kind of funny, 
now to look back on and be like, oh man, if only you knew how easy it, it, ca it can be, you know, and how, how much better your life is going to be. Um, that's the main one, but also, and I've talked about this in a previous video, my relationship with my dysphoria has changed significantly, which uh, means that the treatment is working. Like, I really want to highlight that to anybody who's watching this. If you're trans and you've been doing your therapy and your medical transition, and now you're beginning to feel or have felt for a while little to no dysphoria, that means that what you're doing is working. Um, and that's a good thing. It doesn't mean you're not trans. It means that you are trans and you're being treated for uh, your dysphoria and the treatment is doing what it should. And I definitely went through a period of time, and again, I've, I've spoke about this in a previous video, where it was like, shit, like, uh, my dysphoria is different and or not existent in certain areas. Does this mean that I'm not trans? Does this mean that I went too far in my transition? Does this mean that, uh, that I'm, I'm a different kind of trans? And I think, ultimately, what it is, is, like I said, it just means the medication is working. Like, the treatment and the therapy, it's all doing what it should. The surgery, you know. My dysphoria is so insignificant at this point, and it used to take up such a huge part of my day-to-day -day life, like a huge portion of it. So um, that's been really, it, at first it was scary and surprising, and now it's really good. Like, I feel confident enough to walk outside, and like, I've said that enough times in enough videos, but like, I feel like every day I feel it even more, which is awesome. It's such a wonderful experience. Um, and a, a huge component for that was my top surgery. Uh, being on T helped significantly, but the top surgery I think was the most important part for me specifically. I had my top surgery done um, and I also had some shaping done on the trunk of my body to help kind of m stop me from doing this and go into more of like this shape. And again, that was just for myself that's not something that everybody needs, and uh, I don't regret it. I don't. Um, the recovery from this surgery was awful. The top surgery part, easy. The liposuction part, absolutely terrible. I will never do liposuction again. Um, I had to wear a compression garment 24-7. It was very overstimulating. The texture was all wrong. And um, I also have a syndrome called no burp, which means, or RCPD, which means that I'm physically incapable of burping. Anytime I eat, anytime I talk, anytime I work out, anytime I drink anything, it, this, work, this happens for all human beings. Um, we get little tiny bits of air inside of our digestive tracts, and the majority of human beings can just burp that air out, and I'm physically incapable of doing it. I'm seeing a doctor about this, uh, and I'm going to make a video about it probably next month. But uh, that means that I was also bloated all of the time, pressed up against that compression garment, and it was terrible. It was just the worst. Um, so I would never do liposuction again, but if I had to do it again, and all of the parameters were the same, I would. And so we're going to talk top surgery, and I'm going to show off my scars. Um, so if that's something you're not super comfortable with, here's a timestamp somewhere around here that you should just go ahead and skip to. I will be discussing my top surgery results, we'll look at some scarring, and then I'm also going to show off my body hair, which I'm super proud of and makes me feel very, very happy, and I love to rub my fingers all over it. Um, okay, here we go. So top surgery is an experience that uh, not everybody needs in order to transition, but a lot of people do, myself included. My top surgery took place on October 27th, 2021. So here is what my uh, chest and abdomen look like after three years. All right, let's move this guy a little bit. I'm gonna hold this guy here so we can we can talk about this a little bit. So you can see that my scars have lightened significantly since the last time I really talked about this a few years ago, a couple years ago. Um, and there are some things that I want to get corrected. I have dog earring on this side, and this nipple actually pulls up into my armpit a little bit when my arms are down. 
Um, so I'd like to bring them closer together. The scars did keloid. That is something that can be treated and I have been treating with at-home laser treatment, but it's just a slow going process and it takes time. The rest of my body, the rest of my torso uh, is, is just normal. I mean, you can't really see any scarring. My body hair has come back in, in, in beautiful full form and uh, kind of difficult to see here, but my, my chest hair has also come in, which is very nice. When I was binding, especially before I went on testosterone, my chest circumference was really small, like really small. And now I don't know that I would actually fit into any of my old binders. And that's, I think, related to obviously the, the fitness work that I've been doing, but also because I'm not compressing those tissues constantly, um, that they've had a chance to like actually grow and become genuine muscles. Uh, I used to bind pretty much 24 seven and that's not very healthy. Don't do that. So I do have some damage to my ribs. Uh, I'm still learning how to breathe fully. Uh, and I think I'm going to actually end up going to like physical therapy for that. Um, so yeah, things to consider if you are a person who binds like really, really, really take good care of yourself. Um, give yourself time in between binding, don't bind longer than eight hours. Um, but obviously there are things that we do to keep ourselves alive and that's what I did to kind of keep myself going. So things to think about. I don't really have much else to update y'all on. Um, that is kind of it in terms of my like my transition. Um, I got my name changed and my documents all changed a couple years back. Uh, and I don't really have any issues with, with any of any of that and uh, if I need to I can pass you know I just got to put effort into that but I can pass either direction which is kind of an interesting experience and something that I am currently happy with obviously with the way things are going in the United States that might not be a quality that I want to have for much longer um, but they're gonna have to force me they really are all of that said um, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Thanks for coming along with me on my journey. If you guys have questions about transitioning or, or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. I do want to like, like circle back and address those questions in a later video. But yeah, uh, if you like what you saw today and you want to see more, remember that I only do about one trans video a month. The rest of my content is body doubling for people who want to be creative and write and or study. Um, and for people who need body doubling to accomplish their chores. Um, okay, well, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you next time. Stay through all the way to the end credits to get information on the Patreon, and if you are a Patreon patron, uh, then you'll also see your name at the end of this video. Thanks so much. Hey there, thanks for watching today's video. In case you haven't heard, I recently released a set of new and old short stories through Storydown Publications' annual thriller anthology, Distant Tales. This year's publication is titled Distant Tales, Second Chapter, and 
I would love it if you would check it out. I did the editing and formatting on this thing, and I'm super proud of how it turned out. And of course, it has some amazing stories that will definitely get your blood pumping for the holiday season. As a side note, if you're an author who's looking for community guidance or publishing services, feel free to check out Story Den Publications. I work with them as an editor and formatter on a regular basis, and the founder, Tai Hakobo, is a close personal friend of mine, and I really believe in what she's trying to do. Her goal is really just to make indie authors' dreams come true at an affordable rate with high-quality services, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check them out at the link below in the description. Thanks, and have a great day.